Testing, testing, one, two, un, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. All right, we're live. Welcome back to VR Essentials, where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality and everything about the metaverse. Of course, today, epic episode, as we're going to be talking about ooh, the anticipated release of Formula One 2022 in VR. That's right. That is completely amazing news. Finally, but first guys, do remember that upon hitting the 11,000 subscribers, some of you already know what's gonna happen. Of course, one of you lucky devils will walk away with a brand new HP Reverb G2 sponsored by HP. So they'll be the ones who send it to you. Another lucky devil will walk away with a brand new pair of cyber shoes with a gaming station and everything that goes with it. And a third winner will get a voucher worth 50 US dollars that you can redeem against any of your VR titles, whether it is on the MetaQuest store or the Steam VR store or the Viveball store or Oculus store, whatever. Completely up to you as to how you get to spend this money. But guys, welcome to, if it's your first time here to the channel, Oof, excitement, positivity, and just awesomeness all here because of you. As usual, we will do comment shout outs at the end of this video and also welcome some new members to the community. Whew, all right, let's transfer because this is just so epic. We need to go and look at this. I can't believe that finally the FIA, you know, are gonna have, we're gonna have a game that, you know, basically is gonna enable us to play this in VR with no mods. It will be completely in VR. Let's look at the trailer. There isn't much that they're telling us. Of course, there's no, for example, actual footage oh. of the actual game itself, which is a great shame, of course. So it's very much under wraps. We don't know what's coming. But guys, we also know that, of course, in the world of VR, there are so many videos that we have done on this channel with various different apps. I mean, let me just walk you through some of them. Of course, we have Aceta Corta, which is very popular in the world of VR and works pretty well if you have a good PC system, of course. And also there's Aceta Corta Competizione, which is mm, a bit more in-depth and more professional, but it works a little bit less reliably, I would say, in VR. This one, unless you have a super capable machine like a 380 or something, I don't know. I mean. I'm just saying, with an RTX 2070, it's a little bit hard for this one. And then, of course, we have Dirt Rally, which is another one, and Dirt Rally 2.0, which is even better, of course, which really provides some awesome sensations. And iRacing, which is also very popular in the world of VR, which provides some really good thrills there. And one of my favorites is Automobilista 2, which I have to say is very smooth, quite reliable, a good community out there, and really good fun to play with other people whilst you're in VR. We've good choices of cars and of course project cars is also another one that is one of the favorites amongst the community for those who like to drive in virtual reality so guys i mean to be honest with you what do you guys think are you super excited about this news and of course by the way i will be doing plenty of content with the f1 2022 for sure and i'm going to be using let me just show you my logitech wheel which is just here my G29 wheel, which is was sponsored by Logitech, and because I have a full-time job, I haven't been able to do more content, of course, but I will be using this baby, so do make sure you hit the subscribe button, sorry, the notification button after you subscribe, so you get notified of all these awesome videos, which I will bring you to the channel, but first, let's talk a little bit more about this news of the F1 and see exactly what the details are there. According to a report by N Gadget, new hybrid cars and F1 Life to show close supercars and more. Now, let's not forget that this year, the FIA actually introduced a new car design for F1, which means that for the next, at least, I think it's three years or four years or five years, I'm not quite sure exactly, but for a specific amount of years, they're gonna be using the exact same design. And then of course, they will modify that design and improve on the design in the future generation of F1 
Sporting. So EA's Formula One Sim 2022 will be released worldwide on July 1st, 2022 with the FI's new hybrid cars and updated rules unveiled this season. EA and Codemaster announced the game will supposedly be more competitive and unpredictable thanks to the major overhaul of F1 cars that happened in the real world and includes new features like PC VR support. Woo! I'm so excited by this, guys. Come on, leave a comment below. Let me know what you guys think. Are you excited or you're not really an F1 car fan, so you don't really care? What about, you know, if you use Automobile Lester 2 or other kind of VR sims, do you like to also drive those kind of cars? What kind of cars do you like to drive? Leave a comment below. Let us know your thoughts. Let's have that conversation. That would be really awesome. And do remember at the end of this video, I will read some of your comments, guys, as I always do every single week or oh, every two weeks as I've been having a full-time job, I haven't had time to upload as much recently. Let's continue. New broadcast and immersive modes will let players between more realistic or cinematic modes for formation laps, safety car period, and pit stops. Multiplayer racing will use either two players, split screen and online modes, or you can drive in VR on Oculus Rift and HTC Vive headsets. Now, of course, HP Reverb G2 fans, Let's not forget that it will actually be the best headset to use at that time in point, unless, of course, there is a Joker in the card and HTC decides to release something there, or another competitor, you know, Valve decides to release their headset before then, or the Apple headset comes out, or there's a Joker in the mix, as I mentioned, then, of course, uh, at the moment, the HP Reverb G2 should have been mentioned in that article in KJ. You don't really know what you're talking about, I would imagine. Ha. Uh, <laughs> but the G2 is the best headset for clarity at this moment in time. So if you want the best experience in VR for your, for your F1 car experience, then I definitely suggest that you get the HP Reverb G2 version 2 for this experience, for sure, without a doubt, because Quest Meta people are going to miss out. There's a lot of bugs with the Oculus Link, let's be honest, and the Air Link doesn't really work very well unless you have a super high-end thing. It might not work with virtual desktop, FYI, or it might do, but there might be too much compression or they might be missing something. So just be aware that the best experience in VR at the moment in terms of graphics will be, I'm sorry to say, HP Reverb G2. Do you agree? You don't agree? Is this shocking? Uh, am I making you angry? Am I making you happy? How are you feeling when I say these things? Leave a comment below. Let us know so that we can have that conversation. All right, let's go back to the actual uh, article. Meanwhile, a new feature called F1 Live lets players step into the glamorous world of F1 via customizer or hub to show off supercars, clothing, and accessories earned during gameplay. Now, does this mean there was going to be some NFTs in there? Is it going to be related to the blockchain? Who knows? But it definitely sounds like it could potentially be going towards that direction. Let's say... Not F1 2022, but perhaps when they update it as time goes by, who knows? That could very be the possible uh, what could happen. We don't know. Uh, the other new feature is an adaptive AI mode that lets excess experienced players compete with AI racers matched in skill. Now that's great. That potentially means that you'll be racing with people who match your skill first, and then as you get better, the AI will get better with you. So. It doesn't make it perhaps too hard, but let's see because we have no data at this moment in time, right? Career mode was a popular update last year and is back again with fresh new features. So EA didn't say which. The team feature also returns letting players choose a starting budget based on newcomer, challenger, and frontrunner entry points. It also includes track updates to reflect the real world updates in Australia, Spain, and Abu Dhabi. As mentioned, F1 2022 will go on sale around June. July, guys, July is the date as to when it's actually going to be coming. This is very exciting. What do you think, guys? Packed with punches, packed with, feature, with features, packed with awesomeness, or blah, blah. Have you guys been playing the non-VR version for 2021 and 2020? Have you been using the VR modes? What's your experience been so far? Leave a comment below. It'd be really awesome to know what you guys think. I'm Personally, I'm an F1 fan. I'm pumped. My family live God knows where around the world. They certainly don't live here in Singapore with me. And well, my Derek family, that is, of course. And, you know, it's great because they're F1 fans now I can finally play with my Logitech or with whatever in VR with them as they will be, you know, they're F1 fans, I'm F1 fans. So finally we can play something in VR together. Although they don't have VR, I have VR. But anyway, that's another story. All right, let's go and read some comments uh, very quickly. And guys, do remember, as I had mentioned before, that 
Potentially, you could walk away with a brand new HP Reverb G2, sponsored by HP, as well as walk away with a brand new pair of cyber shoes, and also a voucher worth 50 US dollars to any VR game that you want, either on the Oculus Quest Meta Store, or on the Vipol Store, or on the Steam VR store, of course. All right, let's uh, first of all welcome some new subscribers to the community. Let me just make it bigger and let me just make sure that I did transition over so you can see. Yes, I did. Awesome. All right, let's welcome to the community and thank you very much for pressing the subscribe button as it takes a lot. It takes a lot to press the subscribe button. Blue Video 11, welcome to Justin Ruffo, Francis Fran, Emma's dad, and welcome to Emma as well. Uh, Taneli Huacari, DP, Robert Lewis, Daddy Bo, 35, someone who's Chinese, Marcus Fonseca. Guys, thank you so much for joining the channel. You guys are freaking, freaking awesome. It's thanks to you that this channel is amazing. But first, let's welcome some more people as well. Um, okay, so the next persons will be Paula Bowman, Mati Sola, Fong Lai, Victor Sandoval, Laszlo Levey, Sert, Yunus Shaik, Concord, Stephen Chadowski, and Alexandre Sintra. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for joining the VR Essentials community. Thank you for making this place awesome. Thank you, thank you very much. You guys are awesome. And thank you to all those whose name don't appear due to your privacy settings because it doesn't appear there. And also for all those who joined recently, but unfortunately I haven't been able to mention you today. Thank you very much for that. All right, let's read some comments now. Uh, let's go back here, let me close this. Uh, let's go to the uh, videos that I had posted last week. Let's go to videos. Guys, we're almost at 11,000 subscribers. Please go to the link below to register for the giveaway. It's in the description. It's in the pinned comments as well. It's up to you. So how fast we get to 11,000 and do the giveaway. All right, let's go to the Oculus Quest 2 version 39 updates video, which we had posted last week and read some of your comments. Apparently, Meta's fee is 25%, apply fee is 30%. What Apple is criticizing Meta is they try to combine platforms, it equals to 50%. Yeah, so basically, Meta will be charging fees upwards of towards 50% for any creators. It is completely crazy, it's stupid. I don't see the point in this. Content creators, are you happy? Leave another content, content when, uh, comment below when you go to this video. Thank you very much, Steve, for your, uh, for your actual comment, and I'll reply later as well. Uh, Tyrone Koo says, I have the HTC Vive and the HTC Vive Cosmos Elite. Now I'm just waiting for Apple VR to come out. Well, we all are. Hopefully it's this year. We don't know. It might most probably be next year, but who knows? Thank you for your comment. Jeremy Dice, why? The channel is climbing steady. 50K soon. Oh, it'd be awesome to have 50K. I think 50K is gonna take us maybe a good year before we get there or perhaps two years even. But according to Social Blade, we might be at 200K within four years. So that would be completely amazing, guys. So do continue hitting that notification button after you subscribe for the awesome, awesome content. And of course, I'll be opening up Discord and all these things as, as time goes by. So we'll be able to meet like-minded people as well. Shane Humberstone says, I can't work it out the other week. I played on Horizon Worlds on my Quest 2, but the next day I couldn't find it. Thank you very much for your comment. No idea what goes on, you know, Meta, I got no idea what they do. Uh, Stock Pistol, um, and we don't have a Meta Quest here on this channel because we don't believe in their strategy. Uh, Stock Pistol, if the Oculus Store not working for anyone else, uh, guys, let us know if your Oculus Store is not working in the comments below. Cosmos says, yee, yee back to you, Cosmos. All right, thank you very much for your comments, guys. Let's go to the other video which we had posted as well last week, which is all about the announcement of the Pico link and the differences with the, of course, the Pico Neo, uh, the, the Oculus Meta Quest 2. And here is the Pico Neo 3 link, guys. It's exactly the same as a Neo 3 Pro. However, there will be some differences. And I'll talk about that perhaps the next video tomorrow or the following week. All right, let's go to the comments. Carnes also says Pico Neo 2 and 3 are popping up more often on eBay and I'm strongly considering them to place my Cosmos. Yes, please do. It's an amazing headset. 
I use VR compare a lot. Nice way to compare headsets. Thank you very much for your comment, Nebodu. Uh, Fido Jones says Pico Neo 3 Pro also have an option in the settings to activate 120 hertz. Ooh, all right. I will go and check this out because you better be right. If you're not, mm, I will tell you in tomorrow's video or next week. James Bond says, watch out for Meta. They said three, five days for an RMA for single pixel error. Now I'm on seven weeks and counting and support just ignores you. Well, we do know that Meta's support of, unfortunately isn't great. Um, and they have a lot of room of improvement and HP's and Pico's support is much, 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 much better um, than theirs, that is for sure. Ron Peter, so thanks James Bond for your uh, comment. Ron Peter says, Common Quest 2 is sold in more than 10 million units and that is fantastic for, promote, for promoting a technology. VR needs a big company to make it popular like mobile phones. As I see for developer like me, Pico is a nightmare. Well, Ron Peter, first of all, thank you very much for your comment. Now, the way I see it is that basically VR is gonna become mainstream regardless whether Meta is involved or not. But the fact is that Meta, what they're doing is completely wrong and it's gonna be harder to get less people on Meta to switch to something else unless Meta keep doing it wrongly and they keep using our privacy settings and all these kind of things to sell the data to third parties and also, of course, you know, charge huge fees to content creators. At the end of the day, it is not healthy for VR. That's, that's the way I look at it. I think VR at the moment is great to have it, but it's too ahead of its time because we can't just have Meta in there being having monopoly on, you know, uh, standalone VR headset. It just cannot be. It's not possible. So I think Pico's VR headset with a Neo 3 Link, honestly speaking, it is amazing. It's really good. All it's missing a little bit is content inside of the library, but the, tra the tracking is very good. The graphics are very good. The customer service is super good. The pricing is very competitive. And your data is safer because all the servers are either in the United States or they're in Singapore. They're not in China, guys. Do remember that. So at the end of the day, Meta, I'm very sorry, get the hell out of VR and open the door for all the competitors. That's the way I see it. I don't see how Meta is helping in any way except for maybe competitors going, oh, that's a great idea. We should do that too. Maybe, maybe that way. But other than that, not healthy for the ecosystem. Very sorry, that's my opinion. Do you agree? Are you shocked by what I say? Leave a comment below. Let's have that conversation. Thanks again, Ron Peter, for your comment. Martin Rukem says, thank you for the info. You are very certainly welcome, my friend. Guys, thank you so much for spending some time today on the channel. I hope you, you learned something and, you know, again, leave your comments. Let's interact together. Let's have some conversations. And do remember to go to the link description below that will redirect you to the gleam.io's website where you can basically stand a chance to win a brand new HP Reverb G2 or a brand new pair of cyber shoes with the gaming station or of course a voucher worth 50 US dollars to redeem against any VR title on the Oculus MetaQuest store, Steam VR store or the Viveboard store. All right guys, it's been a pleasure to spend some time with you. Thank you again. I will see you in the next video. Bye guys. Love it. I'm going to love this with the F1. I'm going to love this.